Hello and welcome to Top10List.org where you get a world of knowledge in 10 simple points. On today's episode, we are going to go ahead and talk about the top 10 cliches that you see in action movies. Let's get on with this ridiculousness and start at number 10 with, oh, that catchphrase. Ha, <laughs> I'll be back. Whenever the hero, in some cases also the villain, has a trademark catchphrase, you can be certain the director's plan to build a franchise is around that story. Catchphrases like, why so serious? And... I'll be back. Have the role of making the character distinct and the film more memorable. Let's not forget, the force is with you, young Skywalker, but you are not a Jedi yet. I've got tons more. At the same time, they hold clues to the personality traits and overall mentality of the protagonist or antagonist. Number nine, retirement plans kill. In action movies, it's always bad luck to tell your partner about your retirement plans, and it's even worse to show them a picture of the idyllic summer home where you plan to spend your twilight years. If you do, then getting killed right afterwards is guaranteed, and you become the prerogative and the reason of the protagonist to hunt down the ones responsible. On a side note, this scene was used so many times that most comedy series have at least one episode that parodies the notion. Number eight, nationality issues. Probably because of 99.99% of action movies are Hollywood productions, the protagonist is always, but always, American. Even if his nationality is not American, his behavior, accent, and mentality most certainly are. At the opposite pole, the antagonist, who's usually a diabolic genius, has to be Russian, English, or Asian. For some reason, they are rarely Canadian or French, but, well, that's Hollywood for you. Number seven, that wimpy, backstabbing coward. Whether or not you can trust a secondary character who is initially on the side of the protagonist depends on his chest size and bravery. If he's wimpy and cowardly, then you can be certain that the character is also a traitor and will wait until the last moment to betray the hero and stab him in the back. I mean, there's no way a courageous, pumped, jacked man would ever double-cross you. Hmm, they must not go to the gym. Number six, flesh wounds never killed anyone. Just like in real life, being shot by a villain in an action movie will always result in flesh wounds. The bullet will never actually hit major arteries. If they do hit, then the protagonist's wounds will heal at a superhuman rate. In essence, the scene where the protagonist is hit by a bullet is just an excuse to do the It's only a flesh wound line with a mandatory teeth gritting when the beautiful but inexperienced female character cleans the injury. At number five, mercy for the villain. The protagonist shoots his way through vast armies of the villain, gets into the classical firefight with him, the two empty ammo clips after ammo clip, trying to kill each other, but when it comes down to the killing blow, he just can't do it. I, I can't do it. This scene is usually spiced up with the villain's second attempt to kill the protagonist, which typically justifies the necessity of murder. After all, the main character is the good guy and he would never kill unless he was forced to. Everybody remember Man of Steel and his fight with Zod? Hmm, yeah. Number four, I'm getting too old for this. While there is nothing wrong with supporting the idea that not every old person is helpless, Hollywood directors insist on utilizing the elderly as the main badass protagonist, with all the experience they have, so they can have the I'm getting too old for this line. Now, you're not only rooting for the character because he is so hardcore, but also because the age represents the impediment he had to overcome in order to save the world neighboring slash country girl innocent child at the same time this case age stands for experience and overall ass kicking number three it's over he's dead or is he you notice that the hero empties two ammo clips fires a missile launcher shoots a proton torpedo hits some square dead on the top of his forehead with a nuclear device and blasts him into the sun but the antagonist basically is still alive, and by all accounts, the villain should be pushing up daisies. But there is about 30, 40 minutes of the movie left. How could that be? We're not even halfway through? Oh, right! Skipping over the next 10 minutes, you find out that the antagonist wasn't really dead, which just leaves you furious. Don't worry, the next time he gets killed is for real. Or, I'm sorry, no, the next time after that, he gets killed is... No, I'm... The, the third time... The fourth time after that he gets killed is for real. How else do you keep a franchise alive? Number two, the villain insists on killing the protagonist by himself. Don't worry, homie, I got this. The antagonist, who seems to be pouring virtually unlimited funds, weapons, and financing armies and constructing massive state-of-the-art doomsday devices, has an obsessive, compulsive need to go ahead with the protagonist, be it in a firefight or unarmed combat. If they don't have a showdown, then the whole world domination destruction plan was all in vain. 
Of course, they completely ignore the fact that their nemesis is a highly trained and just as skilled as opposed to them. A variant of this cliche presents the overpumped, overconfident antagonist who could, in fact, squash his opponent like a bug. But you don't really know, don't you? And he doesn't either. Number one, a true badass never looks at explosions. Oh, if you threw a grenade over your shoulder at the gas pump, well, just to have a blow up in flames, would you look? Hell yeah, I would look. What? A freaking explosion was awesome. But probably not, after all, you already know what's gonna happen. Big explosion, fire everywhere. Never mind all the fiery shrapnel that I have to dodge coming behind me. Ah, forget about that. Blah blah, that's boring. I have more excitement changing my grandma's diaper. If you see yourself in this description, that means you're probably perfect for the role of the protagonist or antagonist in the next movie, and it works both ways. You know, the sheer fact that the badass character does not even flinch when the roaring flames engulf the surroundings suggests that he is way too experienced to even glance at the results of his actions to give a damn. After all, which villain can go on for five minutes without blowing something up? Thank you for joining us on this very critical edition of Top 10. If you enjoyed, click subscribe and don't hesitate to join us again for another episode.